What's up YouTube, how goes it? So in today's video, we're having a look at Lenovo's Flex 5 laptop. Now make no mistake, this is not the first review on this laptop. However, what makes this review unique is that today we're actually covering the one with Intel's latest Tiger Lake processor. Of course, that means the configuration we have here today is rocking the latest 11th generation Core i5 processor, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Additionally, we have a 512 GB solid state drive. And yes, of course, powering the graphics is Intel's integrated Iris XE chipset. Additionally, we have the latest Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards on board. And yes, this is in fact a 14 inch IPS panel with a 10 dp resolution. And yes, it is a touchscreen. And of course, in this review, we're gonna see if this laptop has what it takes to earn the hard earned cash in your wallet, all it's good, all it's bad, and everything in between. So as always, guys if you enjoyed this video by the end of the review hit that like button subscribe to my channel it means the world to me and truly helps me grow thank you so much for watching let's get started starting off with the unboxing experience let's just say the packaging here is about as lame as the jokes i make on my review needless to say it's pretty generic anyway once you actually remove the content seal itself and proceed to actually open the box inside you'll find a number of contents first and foremost the laptop itself covered with lots of protective packaging of course once you remove all that stuff here it is in a nice metallic gray like color and it has a hefty bit of weight to it i really like it this looks like a clean professional laptop but we'll come back to it in a minute beyond that you have your usual instruction guide warranty information regulation and you know all the fun stuff that you're probably never gonna read anyway Finally, you have a 65 watt charging adapter and my heart felt so good because this one is actually a out of the box USB-C charging solution, which of course remains to be a pretty rare sight even in 2021, oddly enough. And lastly, you do have the actual wall outlet cable that connects to the charger itself. And that's everything for the unboxing. Let's talk about the design of the Flex 5. So this is definitely a very clean, professional and all business type looking laptop, which seems to be a common theme with Lenovo laptops. And this is no exception of course. Now, it is worth noting this laptop actually weighs 3.3 pounds, which is on the heavier side for two-in-one laptops in this category. Believe it or not, let's say for example, the HP Spectre 360 actually weighs about 2.8 pounds, which is a visible difference. But again, these are still relatively lightweights and they shouldn't be a problem if you're carrying this laptop for prolonged periods of time. Starting off with the top side, you actually have a metallic finish, which is cold to the touch. There's no particular texture. It's super smooth. I really like this. There's minimal branding here. Of course, you do have the classic Lenovo badge on the right side towards the center area, which always looks nice in my opinion. It's just the right amount of branding. Now the rear side of the laptop is where you have your exhaust vent. This is essentially where the hot air comes out of. And also you have your hinges over here. So it's a two tier hinge system. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Now, when you make your way to the side of the laptop, it's a pretty interesting setup of IO ports and mostly in a good way. So the oddest thing here is the fact that you actually still have a proprietary charging port, despite the fact that Lenovo gives you a USB-C solution, but I guess that's kind of good because that's more compatibility options. Also, you have a full-sized HDMI port, the USB-C port I mentioned earlier, which of course has charging capabilities and a headphone jack. As you make your way to the other side, you have two USB 3.0 ports and you have a full-sized SD card reader, which is great. Furthermore, the power button is also situated next to the SD card reader slot itself. Now, in a world where the more you pay for a laptop, the less IO ports you get, thankfully, Lenovo goes in the opposite spectrum of that trend and actually offers you a decent amount of IO port diversity. So good job, Lenovo. As you make your way to the bottom side of the laptop, there's not a whole lot to see. So you basically have a hard TPU finish. You have a very large and linear air intake vent. This is where all the cooler enters into the laptop. So make sure you keep that ventilated. And of course, you have a couple rubber grips to keep the laptop in place and that's pretty much it. As soon as you unfold the laptop, the very first thing you're going to notice is that you have a pretty reasonable amount of palm rest space for a 14 inch laptop. So unless you're the size of a NPA player in terms of your palms, you're going to be pretty comfortable with that palm rest space. However, I can't say the same for the trackpad. Unfortunately, it's not as exquisite as I had hoped. So you have a full plastic trackpad. And while I wouldn't go as far as calling it cheap, it definitely doesn't feel very high quality. So when you click on it, there is a slight bit of imbalance. So the trackpad does slightly lift towards the direction where you're clicking. And on top of that, while the clicks are somewhat tactile, they still feel somewhat finicky at the same time. And it's just not what I would call a very enjoyable trackpad experience, especially when you compare it to some of the competition in a 
similar price range. In contrast to this, the keyboard is actually very nice on the Flex 5 as I've come to expect with Lenovo laptops. Not only does it look very professional, it's also pretty well spaced out except for that annoying slash key that's right next to the shift button on the left side of the laptop. I make a lot of typos because of that. But anyways, beyond that, you have a nice tactile feel to the keyboard. And while key travel isn't super deep, it's more than sufficient for a comfortable typing experience. If you are someone who's heavily reliant on number productivity, it's worth noting you do not have a 10 keypad on this laptop, so that might be something to consider. And yes, of course, this is a fully backlit keyboard with a two-tier setting system. Unfortunately, there are no dedicated media keys, but that's quite all right because they are baked into the traditional function line and you'll find all of them right there. Also, you'll notice on either corner of the keyboards where you have your speaker grills, and yes, this is a stereo setup. Again, I will be doing a sound test later on the video, so stay tuned for that. If you watch my other laptop reviews, you know how much I emphasize hinge quality. I'm happy to say the Flex 5 has a very nice hinge system, so it's got a two-tier hinge system that's definitely designed to take a lot of stress and strain overall. And because this laptop essentially has a 360 degree tilt mechanism, because it's a two-in-one, it needs to be durable. And I definitely think that Lenovo got this right on this part, and this should last for the years to come, as long as you don't give it to your four-year-old. Now with that being said, the laptop has a relatively thin chin and the bezels are very subtle and more or less in line with 2021 standards. The webcam itself is actually on the top of the laptop as you'd expect. You also have a privacy shutter to toggle that on or off. The quality of the webcam is decent, I guess. It's about as good as 720p webcams get, and they're not very good to begin with. So you can definitely do a Zoom meeting on here, but I wouldn't suggest hosting any beauty competitions using this webcam. Let's talk about the actual display itself. So this part of the review kind of breaks my heart a little bit, I'll be honest. So you know when you have a really good movie, but you have that one person in that movie, that actor who's a bad cast, and that kind of ruins the entire movie? That's how I feel the display on the Flex 5. So let's start off with the good stuff. You have a standard resolution of 1080p. That's an IPS display over here, of course. It's fully touch captive. And the overall image quality is nice and sharp. It's respectable for a 14 inch laptop. Unfortunately, things start going downhill really fast from there on. So you only have a color accuracy of about 63% sRGB. I believe that equates to roughly 41% Adobe RGB. Colors look bland and nearly washed out on this laptop. If you are a creative user and you do a lot of photo editing, video editing, or color grading, this is definitely not the right laptop for you because colors, like I said, will feel bleached and washed out. To make matters worse, you only have a peak brightness of 240 nits on this laptop. That's miserable. Seriously, if you're using this laptop in a dark room or a darker lit you know, setting, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna look great. But if you start using this laptop in a really bright room or God forbid outdoors in a partly cloudy setting, you practically can't see anything on this screen, especially if you're using it out in the park, for example, or in a very bright room. And on top of that, they actually made this screen extra glossy. So you can practically substitute this thing as a rear view mirror. Like, I mean, everything shows in the background and I don't know what they were thinking. Seriously, the display is a huge letdown from that perspective. If you are a creative user, I gotta be honest, I would say steer clear from this display. But if you are a person who usually works in more less lit settings or in moderate lit settings, you'll be okay. Let's talk about another super important aspect of the laptop itself, of course, performance. So as I mentioned earlier, we have Intel's latest 11th generation Core i5 processor on here. And I'll be honest, as far as day-to-day -day tasks goes, this laptop handles it like a champ. So anything from word processing to browsing the web to watching the occasional video will all work flawlessly on this laptop. Of course, the real test is when you push the processor and the overall laptop to its limit, which is exactly what I did. So I installed DaVinci Resolve 17 and I started doing 4K editing on here. And there was a fair bit of fame drop. However, despite that, I was still able to actually pretty comfortably do my editing and the laptop kept up. The biggest bottleneck was, not to my surprise, the RAM. So having eight gigabytes of RAM proves to be quite the hindrance when you're trying to do more demanding tasks, which of course makes me emphasize if you have the budget get the 16 gigabyte configuration with the Flex 5, you will thank yourself in the not so distant future. As far as gaming goes, Intel's Iris Xe integrated chipset is actually my favorite integrated graphic chipset currently on the market, and that's because it can actually handle its fair share of modern day games at 30 plus FPS for, you know, low to medium settings at 1080p resolution, which actually is pretty impressive in the realm of integrated graphics. Some games like Counter-Strike, for example, can even hit 60 plus FPS all the way up 
up to medium settings at 1080p which again is fairly impressive. At the end of the day this is not a gaming laptop though so you won't be able to run games like Cyberpunk 2077. You know don't dream, don't make silly dreams, just just don't do that. But anyway, it's a comfortable gaming experience. In terms of thermals and fan noise, so you'll find that as far as surface temperatures go, under peak load, this laptop can hit a maximum surface temperature of about 46 degrees Celsius. However, that's only when you're really pushing it to its limit for prolonged periods of time. Otherwise, in a real world test, you'll find that the sustained temperatures hover around the 35, 36 degree mark when you have it under a high workload. However, start turning things down and keep a lighter workload and you can actually go below 23 degrees Celsius, which is a respectable temperature. Aside from that, unfortunately, I was unable to measure the actual fan noise laptop as my equipment was malfunctioning at the time of this review. I do apologize for that. What I can tell you, however, is that the fan can get fairly loud on this laptop, and anytime you are doing any sort of heavy task like video editing or gaming, expect the fan to, of course, stay on for the duration of the task, and even something as simple as installing will ramp up the fans pretty quickly, but they also ramp down just as fast. Lenovo claims you can get up to 10 hours of battery life on a single charge, in a real world test while well, I was doing light to moderate activities, I found I got around 7.5 to 8 hours roughly. And that's not a whole lot to be honest. A lot of laptops give you far more battery life. So keep in mind if you're trying to get a full day's worth of battery life, you may come close to it, but you'll probably fall short in that regard. Other than that, if you're doing something super intensive like gaming, definitely expect the battery life to drop to around the 2 hours mark all in all. Another thing I want to briefly talk about is the touchscreen capability of the display. So if you are obviously in to the whole two-in-one thing and you're going to use this as a tablet frequently, you'll find that Lenovo's done a great job in making this display super responsive despite the lackluster display quality itself. Unfortunately, this configuration does not come with Lenovo's Active Pen 2. You will have to purchase that separately, but keep in mind some higher configurations do come with it in box. Last but not least, let's talk about the speaker quality. So as I mentioned earlier, you have two speaker grills, one on either side of the keyboard. And yes, this is a top firing speaker system, which is great in a stereo setup. And sound quality is pretty nice. This laptop gets fairly loud and it's definitely one of the better 14 inch sounding laptops I've heard. Have a quick listen for yourself. So what's my hot take on this laptop? Well, priced at approximately $700 USD, the IdeaPad Flex 5 14-inch laptop is actually, believe it or not, one of the cheapest two-in-one laptops you can get your hands on in the market right now. And it has its fair share of good to offer. A fantastic build quality that has a nice mixture of premium and standard materials, great IO port diversity, which is often rare to find in mid-range laptops. Furthermore, you have a fantastic keyboard, albeit without a 10 keypad that makes up for a somewhat mediocre trackpad. Also, the front firing or top firing speakers sound fantastic and definitely punch quite the bit in terms of sound quality. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the weakest link on this laptop has to be its display, which unfortunately falls short in many categories like I mentioned earlier. If you are a creative user, then heed my words of caution and think twice before you invest in this laptop. However, if you're more so interested in the tablet functionality with a nice high quality responsive touch response rate, you'll definitely find this laptop to be a great pick in that regard. Overall, I still think this laptop provides a fair share of good value, and if you can look past the mediocre display, there's definitely a lot being offered over here. So you may find, depending on your use case, this may be a great laptop for you, or it may not be the best choice for you. As always, guys, I hope this review gave you some idea of what you can expect with this laptop and whether or not you want to buy it or not. As always, if you enjoyed the content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. So, Tech, logging out.